In this video, I will tell you about MO to Passion for version 116.5. This mod technically adds a large number of new blocks and mechanisms. About generation. This mod adds a large number of hands, such as nickel, silver, lead, tin, copper, saltpeter, apatite, sulfur, and also two new types of sand are bitumen red sand and just bitumen sand or otherwise solid oil. Also, this mod adds three new mobs, Blitz, Blitz, and Basalt, from which you can meet various biomes and knock out the following items from them. A speck of Brits, a fragment of Basalt and a cube of Bleis, which in turn is used in further crafting. Before I tell you about energy, I recommend that you do the following two subjects that will simplify your life. This is a sickle hammer, this is his recipe, three ingots of iron and a gear in the middle, depending on which mod you have installed. The turpid hammer will allow you to rotate some blocks if you right-click on them. Or if you hold down the shift plus the right mouse button, it will allow you to remove some mechanisms from this or from other mods. I, Thermolipedia. This is an internal game book, here she has such a recipe that will tell you all about this mod, although it is now exclusively in English but perhaps Russian versions will appear later. Formally, this book is a full-fledged guide to this fashion, so if you are interested, then do not forget to read it. This mod adds both energy and RF energy, which we will generate using the following generators. We have five generators in total and we will start with the simplest one, the Sterling generator. That's his recipe. You will need a red streaming coil, here is its recipe. An iron gear depending on what kind of spot you have. Two ingots of iron, two stones. Well, here we have additional blocks, but mostly stone and redstone dust will be used here. Let's go through the interface of our generator. The first information tab will briefly tell you what your generator is running on and what it does. The second tab of the RF in the tick. Here you can find out how much RF energy per tick it produces from various types of fuel and how efficient it is. The third tab will allow you to install the extension here. In this mod, there are a large number of extensions for all mechanisms, so I'll tell you about them a little later. We aim at this light here and here we can see what types of fuel our styling generator is powered by. In this case, the styling generator runs on solid fuels, such as coke, coal, coal, fire powder, all wood type objects burned, seedlings and other things that can burn. The fourth control tab will allow you to control your generator using rest and signals. Namely, ignore the rest signal, have low priority or high. Compression generator. This generator runs on liquid fuel, using wood oil, creosote oil, purified fuel, or other types of fuel, if you have the appropriate mods. The interface is slightly different. Here you already have a tank in which you can pour liquids. Fuel can be supplied by taking a bucket in hand and pressing the right mouse button, or by pipes. The fuel is flooded, the energy has gone, and this is the recipe of our generator. A red flow coil, two iron ingots, two bronze ingots, one bronze gear and restone dust. Magma generator. Poured lava and it will generate energy. It's simple. The interface is no different from the previous one. Here is a recipe. An extinct coil, an invar mixture, was incorrectly translated. It is an invar gear, two iron ingots, two invar ingots and restus dust. Numismatic generator. This generator works on coins that can be crafted using the same mod. Click on this fire and we'll see how many different types of coins there are. A certain coin can be made from each ingot. Depending on the price of this ingot, you will generate a certain amount of energy. Let's take a look at the recipe for this generator. A red flow coil, two iron ingots, two constantin ingots and a tin gear and rest and dust. Lipid generator This generator works on jewelry. I can put a crystal of prismarine, lapis lazuli, diamond, ruby, sapphire, emerald and nesser quartz. 
And let's see how it works. They threw a diamond and the energy goes. The recipe for the generator is as follows, a red flow coil, two iron ingots, two lapis lazuli, one arrest in dust and a golden gear. Let's talk about the basic mechanisms. We will have a shredder, a rest a stove, an induction smelter, a magma crucible and an encapsulator of liquids. Here is the recipe for the chopper. A piston, a mechanism frame, a red flow coil and two copper gears plus two silicon. The gears are being crafted like this, the coil is like this, and the frame of the mechanism is as follows. You can use the most ordinary glass, not necessarily colored. The shredder is overworking the labors, increased the amount of resources at the output. Let's take a look at its interface. I've already told you about these three menus. The energy menu has changed a bit. Here you will see the effectiveness of this mechanism and how much it consumes at the moment in the tick. We also added a new configuration menu, click on it and here you can configure the side from which resources will be supplied or taken. Hover the mouse over one of these squares of the face and click either the right mouse button or the left. And here you can change sides. The blue side, that is, you see you have such a blue square, which means that it takes this face. Orange, then he will push out. You can also put a combined mode, or choose a gray color, in which case the items will still be delivered to us. Or disable it altogether. And you see the items have now stopped coming, although the funnel is connected. We have also added two interesting buttons that significantly speed up the loading and unloading of items. For example, we load our ore into the funnel and it starts to be delivered slowly. As soon as we press this button, look, 64 instantly just completely filled up. Let's do it again. We throw the funnel and it immediately sinks into our mechanism. And turning on the orange button pushes out objects. Let's power up the chopper, put our styling generator with it and turn this red side so that it looks at one of its faces. Now you can safely throw fuel and energy will be supplied to us. Our shredder starts to repile the ore. In addition to doubling the output, we may have some additional resource. By adding silicon or basalt powder to the bottom slot, you will increase the amount of additional drop. About the redstone stove, the interface is very similar to the one we had in the shredder, except that there is no slot for the modifier. It's just that if you throw some kind of food or something that can be processed, it will start to overcook you. And here you can see the recipes, everything that is available in the game. And here is such a craft at our rest and stove. Two copper gears, a red flow coil, bricks, rest and dust and the frame of the mechanism. Next, let's talk about the induction foundry. That's what she looks like. This is what our induction melting looks like inside. It is designed to create alloys. Let's look at the recipes, what can she do? The foundry can quickly make ingots from dust, make new alloys and various new items reinforced. You can also add catalysts that will increase the yield, sand, fire powder and others. The most useful thing is that you will be able to melt whole armor back into ingots. Of course, you won't get 100% of the ingots from what you used, but if you repair the armor or find a whole one, it's very profitable. For example, gold and iron, as well as tools made of these materials. Here is such a recipe for our induction half. A half stove, a mechanism frame, two sand, two invar gears, but here they are incorrectly signed, a red streaming coil. Magma tegel, that's what he looks like. That's the recipe he has. Invar gears, a red flow coil, two non-core bricks, the frame of the mechanism and glass, not necessarily colored or those that are shown here. The most ordinary will do. Here is such an interface. A magma crucible is needed in order to create liquids from some objects and blocks. For example, liquid light stone, molten wriststone, molten ender pearl and not only. There are a lot of them here. Comma our magic crucible of energy in let's produce, for example, water. Our water is made from blocks of snow. The encapsulator of liquids is needed in order to fill objects with liquids. Let's pour the liquid from the magma crucible directly into our capsulator. To do this, we will set it up now. We set up this side to push and press this button here. Auto exit is enabled. And here it is enough for us to turn on the input with this facet. 
It's turned on, now, in theory, we should have liquid supplied and everything works. This is basically the interface of the encapsulator. It has a built-in tank and slot. The liquid encapsulator will allow you to fill the necessary blocks, objects, or some containers that can store it with the appropriate liquid. For example, here they filled a jar with honey and a bottle of honey turned out. And here's a recipe for a liquid encapsulator. Two copper gears, a red flow coil, two glasses, a bucket and a frame of the mechanism. That's it for me, friends, Darka was with you and in the second part of the guide, which will be released, I will tell you about the remaining mechanisms and about the extensions that can be used in them.